First of all, I would like to welcome you very much to this short introduction of uh, the climate of the carbon conversations. Um, the carbon conversations is an offer of uh, HEX, Swiss Church Aid, and Fastenaktion, which is not, which we cannot translate because it doesn't exist, but it's our Catholic partner. So. Um, the carbon conversations take place in one in the field of um, of our thematical um, focus theme, which is climate justice, and this is one of the parts where we try to sensibilize the the, the Swiss uh, population on the problems which which we have with climate and climate justice in general. This is as our sensibilization work, which is one of our mandates we have as Swiss Church Aid. So, welcome everybody. I switch. Because we have limited time, maybe I'm sometimes too uh, fast. Later on you can, you can, you can all, um, ask, ask questions if you like. So we will go through it. We first, of first, we will have a short introduction, what are carbon conversations. Then we will head to a, a short quiz where every one of you can participate. And then we, have, we will do some homework or one exercise, which we normally do in our carbon conversations with the crowd who, takes, um, who participates in the carbon conversations. This is <laughs> the sign. I because it's, I have it in my back, I cannot really see what's going on there. So, who are we? I'm uh, Elke Fassbender, I'm working for HEX, and he, my colleague Sandro Schmidlin, he will take over, um, is working for HEX as well. The Carbon Conversations were created in England by a psychologist, she's called Rosemary, and by an engineer, Andy. Both, Rosemary and Andy, with different working backgrounds, they created a unique project that addresses the practicalities of carbon reduction while taking into account the complexity of emotions and social pressure that make this difficult makes difficult everyone for us would like to reduce his his footprint his carbon footprint but we can't sometimes so this is a unique project they both created taking to into account the, the th also the, the social pressure so that was rapidly um, it's a method i just said to help to reduce the carbon footprint um, it's in, in several countries, uh, it's, it's going on in, in several countries, you can read which countries that's, that are. Um, they, were they, were, they brought it to us in, in, uh, in 17 and started in the, Swiss, in the Swiss part of Switzerland. And 19, former Bread for All, now Hex. And Fasten Opfer, now Fasten Aktion, our Catholic partner, um, brought them or implemented them in the German part. Voila. Why carbon conversation? Uh, co <laughs> carbon conversations. Um, it's like facts alone do not change people's behavior. We know that. Give you an, uh, give you an example. Everyone knows that flying harms the climate. And also everyone knows that smoking is bad for your health. We all know these facts. But we also, when we are alone, we find rapidly excuses um, why we cannot reach our goals for the reduction of our carbon footprint. 
why we cannot stop smoking or still want to go to a, to a, to a shopping trip to London. We, also, we always find excuses for that, you know. And that's where the carbon conversations come into place. Because in, within the carbon conversations, you are working or you're staying in a group of people, normally in a group of eight to ten, <laughs> not in, this, uh, in, in, in such a large crowd, because we do group work, we do different types of uh, methods. And, but within a group, it's easier to motivate each other how to overcome our personal obstacles to reduce carbon footprint. That's why we, um, we started this. And we started this in Switzerland. That's one of the pictures. Rapidly over that. Um, we adapted the carbon conversations from England in Switzerland. The carbon conversations take place at four evenings normally. And we have um, eight to ten people, which is ten people is the biggest, biggest group we would like to have. Two facilitators um, helping the group to work. It's not like the, the facilitators need um, to have, need to be experts, but they, as the word says, facilitate that the group can, can work and, and, and we, we, we present the um, the different methods how we can how we can work together so it takes place for evenings two hours different fields nutrition a general part introduction general part for, um, on, on climate nutrition mobility and consumption um, well as I said just said Andy and and Rosemary just created this unique project because it is very important that uh, emotions and the social pressure is taken into account. As I, I, as I gave you just an example for why can I not reduce my footprint because I alone, I would love to go to London to my shopping trip, but <laughs> you have, when you are in a group, you, you, you will be motivated to find out that there are other possibilities and that reduction of carbon can also be fun that's what you learn in the in the in the conversations so very warm warm welcome from my side um, so for what are the goals of the carbon conversations so we said the goal is that individuals reduce their ecological footprint and for that we first need to know what is actually our ecological footprint are we living already a climate friendly life or do we actually live uh, a life which is not climate friendly at all so we we want to know our carbon footprint and this is normally done by a questionnaire they exist many but for example the the WWF has a, a very elaborated one where i can answer some questions and then i know how many tons of co2 i my lifestyle emits. And then, of course, I want to, to see what steps can I take now as an individual to live a more climate-friendly life. At the same time, I also want to motivate uh, my wife, maybe my children, my parents, my friends to also do the same and see what can they do to live a more climate-friendly life. And I also want to formulate my own reduction goals. That's one, uh, what we're going to do later on uh, in a few minutes. Um, and to actually stick to them. Because it's always easy to have resolutions on the 1st of January, what I'm going to do better next year. But we all know that it's quite difficult to then actually stick to them. And when I do a promise in, in front of a group, they will, I will know, they will ask me in a month's time, what did you actually do it? And when I have this group pressure slash motivation, the chances will be higher I will actually um, stay on my track. So who is the target group of those conversations? So we are from HEX Switzerland and we are both moderators of um, carbon conversations in German, in German speaking Switzerland. So the target group, many of you are from Switzerland, is actually you. So it's people who want, who are worried about climate change, who some maybe feel overwhelmed about the, uh, 
all the catastrophes which are going to happen and uh, who want to live a more climate friendly life and actually act now, here and now and not wait for solutions from, from the politics but do a first step. So uh, Elke already um, said it a little bit, so it's the, the structure is it's four evenings normally and it's two hours per evening. The first evening we're gonna talk about what does trigger climate change in me, what feelings do I have when I listen to the news and how can I take action. Then in a second workshop, normally it's two weeks apart from one workshop to the other, it's about mobility. So when I um, commute to work, when I go to, to holidays, what, where do I emit CO2 and how can I reduce my, my emissions there? And as well, climate communication. So we all know uh, it's difficult if you have a close friend or family uh, and they, they fly um, for a weekend to, to London to actually talk to them and, and point the finger on their behavior. So how can we have fruitful discussions which do not end up in frustration or uh, a worsening of our relationships? Then the third workshop is about nutrition. That's what we're going to do today with you. A small glimpse um, and also civil society engagement. Where can I act? Where can I start to, to, uh, to make a difference? And the fourth workshop is about consumption. So buying electronics um, or clothes or other things. And what does this have? Uh, what impact does this have on, on the climate? And of course, on the fourth workshop, we also would like to that everyone um, uh, formulate some reduction goals. And then hopefully, um, when you promise that in front of a group, you're more likely to actually stay on track. So what are the methods we use? So actually, the, um, there are two booklets. One booklet is about the theory, the facts. So this is something you can read before the sessions. So uh, to have some technical background, but it's not the focus of the, of the conversations. It's uh, for those who are interested, but not a must. And then we have a diary, which is, let's say, the book of homework, where there are exercises um, you can do. Um, there, is, there is brainstormings, role plays, to, to actually get in contact with, with your fellow group members. Then we also have board games. So what you see here is uh, a bunch of food, which we then, which you put on a board to see, to learn um, where in the production, um, transport and package, where does it emit CO2 and how much? So what is the group's role? We said it's normally eight to 10 people. So what is, what is the advantage to do that in a group and not um, alone at home? So it's actually to motivate and support each other because we all know we want to have a more climate friendly life, but we struggle in the daily implementation. We can increase commitment for resolutions, as we said, and we can also exchange ideas with like-minded people. For example, if I have a vegan in my group and she says, I know this recipe for this delicious cake, it's totally vegan, you won't believe it. Uh, and she gives me the recipe and I do it and I say, wow, cool, it's really easy to do and it's really climate friendly. So I learn from my, my fellows um, how to live a more climate friendly life. And of course, that's very important, celebrate success. What is the facilitator's role? So when, for example, Elke and me, we facilitate so, such talks, 
we prepare and guide through the sessions. There is a, a schedule we, we more or less follow. And we create a safe, secure, and trustworthy ambience. So we don't blame each other. We don't say, why did you fly to the holidays or why did you eat the meat? But it's, we share all our difficulties we face and we don't judge. We support each other and celebrate the small steps we do towards a more climate-friendly life. So we as facilitators, we are not climate experts. We have some background knowledge, but we are not experts. Normally, the group members, they have much more experience than we do. And we are not teachers. It's not about teaching knowledge. It's about sharing this space that people can interact. Um, how to become a facilitator? So th the goal uh, of the Carbon Conversations is that from those eight to ten people who participated in a talk, that some of them actually think, hey, it's really cool, I would like to, uh, to, to advance this idea and become a facilitator myself and facilitate um, those four evenings for other people. And for this, uh, HEX and Fastenaktion, we organize two-day training workshops how to become a facilitator. And that's for free, but in return, the, those people, they commit to hold two times four evenings of climate, to, of carbon conversations. And with this, we hope that more and more people will become facilitators and more and more people will also join the carbon conversations. Then, does this actually work? you might ask. I mean, it's nice to, have, to meet in the evening, have a tea and talk, but does it actually work? And for that, HEX and Fastenaktion, we commissioned an evaluation. So the Center for Development and Environment at the University of Bern, they asked about 50 people who participated in those climate uh, carbon conversations um, before they started the carbon conversations to fill in the WWF footprint calculator and again five months after and at the same time they asked a control group of about 250 people to do the same and as you can see um, both groups showed a reduction but on the left hand side you see that the difference between the two columns is much more prominent than on the right and actually we see that the participants of the carbon conversations they reduced their footprint by more than one ton uh, CO2 more than the con control group did, which is a significant difference. So I can tell you for myself, actually, the c since I participated in the carbon conversations, I'm mostly vegetarian, and that would more or less be one ton of difference um, of CO2 per year. So what participants say, on the one hand, the climate talks motivated me to continue living sustainably, but they also took away the pressure to be perfect at it. So now it's time for some action. Enough talking. What, would I, what we would like to do with you is to play a short quiz. And for that, um, we, all, we show you two products, so two types of food, and then you should decide for yourself which one is the more climate friendly one. And it is the calculations were done by Eternity, which they, they themselves, they claim to have the most comprehensive and most accurate database on, uh, on the life cycle emissions of food. So it's not something we invented, but we base ourselves on the, on the best data available. So let's start. Uh, I would say um, we do this with raising hands. So maybe, maybe before we start, it's, about, it's only about CO2 equivalent emis emissions of CO2 equivalents. It's not about water. It's not about diversity loss. So it's only about CO2 equivalents. And it's about production of the food and the transport. 
And that's where most of the emissions actually happen. So let's go to the first question. Which of, of the two, avocado or eggplant, is better for the environment? So who thinks the avocado is better for the iron environment? Raise your hand now. Okay, who thinks that the eggplant is better for the environment? Most of you. Okay, so actually, what we hear in the media is always the, this huge water, this amount of water the avocado used to grow, but actually if they, and that is also assumed in, in, in the database that they are coming by ship and not by plane, then the avocado actually emits less CO2 than the eggplant does. <laughs> Yeah, so let's go to the second one. What is better for the climate, oat milk or cow milk? Who thinks it's oat milk? Okay, who thinks cow milk is better for the environment? Okay, it's about half-half. Actually, oat milk is much, much better. Uh, this is of course, it always depends where the, the products come from. What Eternity did is they did a sampling in Swiss and the German supermarkets and, and just used the most sold products. Okay, what is better for the climate, dark chocolate or pears? Who think it's dark chocolate? Three hands, four hands, five hands. Who thinks it's pears? Okay, more. Actually, both are pretty good. So I think, I myself think it's very good news because at four o'clock when I have the, the afternoon downer, I need either fruit or chocolate and both are actually fine. Let's not go too deep into the details. <laughs> so, uh, what do you think is better for the climate? Beer or wine? Who thinks it's beer? Quite a few hands. Who thinks it's wine? I would say about the same. Actually, wine is much worse. <laughs> Why? I, as I said, I'm not an expert. I just trust what eternity calculates. But I could assume that uh, wine normally travels from further away and also has a longer, a longer processing than beer. That's my assumption. Maybe one of you is an expert and can tell us. Okay, let's go to the last one. Which is better? Which product is better for the climate, black tea or coffee? Who thinks it's black tea? Okay, a few hands. Who thinks it's coffee? About the same. So, both are... Black tea is very good and coffee is good. Which I think also is quite good news as we, uh, many of us either like one or the other or both. Good, so what are the learnings? Of course, it's very, very complicated, especially if we then also factor in um, water consumption um, or biodiversity loss or other factors. It depends where the products are from, how they are transported. It's, it's really complicated, but what the, the founders of the carbon conversation say, you can actually stick to this rule of thumb so if you eat vegetarian, seasonal, local, and organic, this is most likely the more climate-friendly option. So if you have the next time a conversation with uh, your friends about if it's 1.5 tons or 1.6, maybe 
it would be, it's just an excuse not to act, but to, uh, to uh, do the nitty gritty, talk the nitty gritty details. If, if you follow those four rules, you're already doing a very good job and eating and drinking climate friendly. Okay. Now, as I just said in the beginning, we are going to do some homework with you. We are going to do some exercise. But before I give you the sheets to fill in, I would like to explain shortly what we are going to do with you. This is one method we use in the, in the carbon conversations with our participants. And this method um, is called forced field analysis. And this forced field analysis um, works not only for the field of nutrition, it works also for the field of mobility and consumption. A, for, uh, a forced field analysis um, deals to find out the restraining forces, meaning what keeps you or what holds you back to fulfill your goals to reduce carbon in your footprint and also to find the driving forces. The driving forces are the forces that take you ahead and that help you to fulfill your goals which you are personally set for your, for your, car for your carbon footprint. Um, that's later on I, I show you and I give you a sheet where you can work together. Um, always keep in mind that it is more effective to reduce the restraining forces than to force the others. It's always, of course, it's good to have driving forces. That's what you lead, what, what, what is what you lead, but more effective for reducing or for, for supporting climate is to reduce the restraining forces. I give you examples and I come back to that. This is what we're gonna do with you. Um, left you see the restraining forces, in the middle you see I want. I want means set a goal which you can or which would you like to reach within a certain time. It's up to you, whatever you like. And we do not, uh, afterwards we do not have an exchange. <laughs> you do that for, your, for yourself. And then you, you, read, you write down I want, and on the left you write down what holds me back. What is it personally and emotionally, whatever, what holds me back to fulfill my goal. And on the other hand, the green one, you write down the driving forces. I give you example. I want to eat no meat in October. We always start with goals that can be fulfilled easily. Because if you, if you use or if you, if you write down a goal which you cannot reach because it is so high, <coughs> it's, um, you, you won't, you won't uh, stick to it. You, you, you should go step by step and start with little things. And little things, that's what makes the change. So that's uh, only an example, no? You choose, uh, later on you choose another one for yourself. Um, for instance, a restraining force could be, I don't know how to satisfy my protein need without eating meat. I give you an example, another one. My mother is disappointed if I don't eat her famous sauerbraten on Sunday. It's a restraining force. Or my dog, my, my dog loves the bones, the fresh spare rib bones. You know? Yeah. So to reduce a restraining force, I give you an example for the first one. You could think about how to restrain this one. You could think about, well, I should eat more vegetable proteins, which is lentils or chickpeas, for instance. So you can reduce your consumption of meat by using other type of protein, which is also very good. 
This is how to reduce uh, restraining force. The second one is you should explain your mother why you're doing this. And when she loves you, she will accept it. And my dog, I, have, I just made a research and we found vegetable bones. You can, also, you, you can also buy vegetable bones for your dog. So that's how to think to how can I reduce my restraining forces. A driving force can be for yourself eating more vegetables and fruit. This is a driving force because it's better for my dis digestion. Or I will save money and I can, instead of eating meat, go to a concert, which I, which I love. That's what I said in the beginning. It's not only um, punishment, it's also fun. And it can be fun to go to a concert, you know? Um, well, that was, ah, we only had two examples for driving forces. So what, we now, what I now do is, I hand you over the sheets we prepared. Ah, oh, uh, Sandra is helping me, thank you. And you fill in for yourself first. The instructions are on the other side and the, and the, um, and the column is on the, on the back. You fill in your, um, your, your goal. You, you do it for yourself. And afterwards, when you are ready, look for a partner, someone here in the audience, and discuss what you found out. That's all. And that's something we do in the, in the, climate co in the uh, carbon conversations also. We, we, we have a lot of, of group work, we have a lot of couple work, but we also have brainstorm methods where we find out different things. So it's now time for you <laughs> to work. We will ring the bell when we are ready. Like 15 minutes, something. Thank you. You see, you know, like as a facilitator, we do not have to do much, a lot of work. It's the group who has to work. We just prepare the space for you. So normally I thought we do not have enough time, but we have. So we prepared something what we do normally after this session also in the, in the group. Um, I don't know whether I have, oh, excuse me, whether I have that one. Okay, thank you. Normally we ask someone of the group who would like to share with the plenary or with the audience one of his or her goals and a restraining force and how to, how to overcome this one or a driving force. Is someone willing to do that or is someone who like to share with the others? Welcome. If you like to, you can. If you, Thank you. Um, I was looking at trying to reduce plastic packaging on my fruit and vegetable. Um, restraining forces. Uh, so many things come automatically wrapped and you don't have a choice. It takes time to find alternatives. The alternatives may be more expensive. And it's unclear to me how they actually do recycle the packaging. Some places now, some shops take the plastic, but do they really do anything with it? So that's on the restraining side. What drives me? Real concern about the amount of plastic that we have all around us in everything that we do and handle. Um, it pu pushes me to find where you, we can try and recycle different types. So the um, trays that things are set in, the film over the top, the plastic bags, all those need different places. I feel better for doing it. I feel very pleased with myself and better than everybody else, which is a sort of rather bad driving force. But locally, we do have farm shops where you can go and buy fruit and vegetable that are grown very nearby. Maybe not oranges and bananas in England, but many other things. Thank you. Thank you very much, Noah. Thank you. 
Uh, maybe. Maybe, yeah. May I ask you, you uh, thank you very much for presenting yeah. uh, the example. Um, did you find any strategies how you could reduce your restraining forces? Um, not to worry so much about um, the time, but to, to learn where to go, which certainly is easy for me because we've got some alternatives and once I've discovered them, they're good to use. Okay. Thank you very much. Someone else would like to share another last vote? Or there is someone, please. Uh, yeah. uh, so we, I decided that uh, I wanted to look at how I could reduce my carbon intake in my house from reducing my gas and electricity because that is really um, very expensive now in the United Kingdom, probably everywhere. Yeah. So uh, I wanted to do that uh, to save money, be absolutely honest, save money. And also because it's good, it's better to do it, it's good for the planet, not to use so much gas. Uh, because like this lady, I would feel, I would feel I've done my bit, you know. Um, but the restraining forces for me are that uh, I may get very cold <laughs> because I live in an old house which is difficult to uh, modernize with insulation and uh, things like that. Um, and I, I, the way I thought I would do it, the most basic way, I thought I would turn my thermostat down to 18 which sounds quite high, but I know that I will be cold in the winter. <laughs> and I know my grandchildren won't like this. So there's a big restraining force if you've got babies, you know, and how can you have the house too cold? So um, I haven't sorted out the grandchildren in my head yet, but I decided that the way I could mitigate being very cold was just to wear another jumper. <laughs> and that the fact that it was an old house didn't mean we couldn't do something, although there's, there are some things we can't do, but we could do some things like uh, changing our fuel supply to wood, which is... Um, and ch uh, what was the other thing? I can't remember. I said enough. <laughs> Thank you very much for sharing <laughs> um, with us. You know, it, this is, this is um, how the carbon conversations uh, go on. It's like within a group, talk about different things, try to find out uh, what drives us and what restrains us. But there are a lot of others which we can, um, which we do. We just gave you a short, really a, a brief, brief insight in, uh, in the nutrition part. Um, there are other fields we touch, which we did not touch today, which is mobility, flying, you know, it's bad, very bad, but train and something. And you, um, you can, in, in these in this carbon conversations, you, you, you will exercise with other people and you will uh, motivate each other. And as, as Sandro just showed, um, it has an impact. There was this um, analysis or this, um, ec um, how, how do you say that, evaluation done by the university. So it has an impact. So every one of us can do. It's not enough to set policies and to have the politicians say how we should reduce. It needs, a, it's need, it needs also a bottom up, meaning um, individuals are also responsible to reduce the carbon footprint within their possibilities of course so if you would like to learn more about it <laughs> you just make a photo of this is better to <laughs> make a photo and take a photo and take a picture and instead of um, instead of writing everything down but as you can see in, in in a lot of countries the carbon conversations take place so I would thank I would like to thank you very much for being here thank you very much for participating in our short short very short short session 
um, and wish you a, a nice rest of the day. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And of course, if your country is not listed here, then uh, it's up to you to bring the carbon conversations to your country or motivate maybe organizations active in climate, um, climate movement to bring the carbon conversations to your country.